for me is like, you know, I, I, I'll think back and realize that my ancestors done this and and to be able to do what they, they're doing, done years ago, hundreds of years ago, is a, well, to me, it's a honor and a blessing. I'm so excited to have writer, director, producer, man of all trades, Wendell G. Collier here with us from Land of the Mi'kmaq, Travel by Canoe. And I want to congratulate you on being nominated for Best First Nations Film, Best Canadian Film, and Best Human Spirit Film. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us how you got involved in this project? This was kind of a, a great opportunity that was kind of put forward to me by, uh, by CBC. Um, we were approached and kind of said, you know, would you guys like to make some films in Newfoundland? And of course, I, being from Newfoundland, originally from the South Coast, from and, and a member of Mobile Kick First Nation, I was like, of course, I'd love to make films in Newfoundland. This would be amazing. So um, I touched base with uh, Sagamaw Mizel Joe, um, who's, who's head of Mobile Kick First Nation. And we started talking about ideas of what kind of stories that he would like to share. Because, um, of course, inside of this process of filmmaking, you want it to be as inclusive as possible. So um, a lot of those discussions were very early on with, with Sagama Mizel Joe and, and with the First Nation, just to kind of say, what do you guys want to celebrate? So, um, and of course, the first thing that uh, Sagama put forward was um, the canoe building that takes place um, in Mabokek First Nation in Con River, Newfoundland, uh, because it is so tied to tradition and it is, uh, it is like an art form that, that, that they are working really, really hard to preserve. And it's part of the tradition, it's part of the culture. Why do you think it is important to maintain the building tradition of these canoes? <clears throat> it's a really good opportunity to, to reflect and connect upon ancestral ties, you know, which is really important for, um, for First Nations people across Canada, you know, not, not just in Newfoundland, but, um, you know, the fact that we as First Nations people, we, we had a, a lot of our culture stripped away. Uh, through through colonization and you know part of the sort of rush I guess is to preserve and 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 keep this going so that is preserved for future generations for the seventh generation coming behind us um, to make sure that you know these these practices aren't lost forever it's, it's an incredible thing and, and being inside of that wood shop being inside of that canoe shop in Newfoundland and just standing there you can tell that like it's generational like it's like so many people have come through that canoe shop and have built the canoes there um, and, and it's impressive. It's a really impressive thing that they put together. One of the things uh, here at uh, TBFF that we've noticed with the First Nations films that do come in is a lot of them deal with culture and a lot of them deal with losing the culture or healing the culture or recapturing the culture. Can you explain uh, a little bit about that disconnect, why that happens? So through the process of, of colonization, you know, a lot of the culture and traditions were, were lost or pushed aside, or sometimes, you know, in, in the case of uh, the West Coast, um, banned outright by, by Canadian government officials and whatnot. So it's, that's tough, you know. And then, of course, now here we are in, uh, you know, 2023 and, you know, on the, on the backside of truth and reconciliation, trying to, you know, um, preserve, trying to revive, trying to, you know, fan, fan the little spark of culture that's left and try to get it back to a flame, you know, uh, to borrow the analogy from, from Ms. Aljo in, in, the, in the piece. And I think that's, that's more, that's the most important thing right now is that, you know, whatever, whatever is there is, is preserved if, and grown and is not lost. And, you know, like uh, the big one is the language more than anything else. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of really great Great community leaders, particularly in Nova Scotia in Eskasoni um, First Nation, who are really, really working hard to preserve uh, the language because you know the language is is something that ties the entire culture together, um, and I think that's that's the most important thing that most First Nations are dealing with now across Canada when it comes to culture. It's like if we don't do this, it is lost forever, and you know hopefully um, hopefully more communities are kind of putting the putting that mantra forward and, and making it happen. But I, I think it is happening. You know, I can see little sort of undercurrents and whatnot across a lot of communities that, that the culture is being preserved, which is a great thing and which is, which is something that I love to see. 
how did creating this film help you connect to your culture and your sense of home in that area? Anytime I get a chance to, you know, go back to the South Coast of Newfoundland and stand on that shore, it's, 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 a, it's incredible. It's a powerful thing where you stand and you go, okay, so every single relative I've ever had in my entire DNA makeup is from this one place, um, which is an incredible thing to kind of say. What was really great was being able to go back and, and meet people like, like Billy Joe, um, meet people like Derek, and spend time with, with Sagamon, Mizel Joe, you know, and, and again, just be in the community. I mean, I think that's the most important thing whenever I, I set out to make any of, these, any of these films that are sort of indigenous centric is you can't just, you know, just, you can't just land, jump out of the van, cameras rolling. Okay, let's go guys. It's like, no, there's, there's conversations to be had. There's, you know, there's tea to be drank, you know, and there's like sit downs and, and, and sharing circles to be a part of. And that's, that's what's important. And that's, what's really cool. I think with, with making any of these films, um, I've done four now in Newfoundland and four in Ontario. Uh, and every time that we do them, we, it's almost like a really nice, slow process in and just kind of, and it feels like the, the overall feeling is that the people who are in the film, they have a part in making of the film because it's, it's their ideas, you know, that the idea, the idea to cover the canoe building didn't come from me. It came from the community. You mm -hmm. know, the people who are presented came from the community. They, they tell me their stories, which is, which is great. So it was, it was amazing to be able to, to form those connections. And now, now when I go back to the South coast, you know, I swing by the canoe shop, I see Billy Joe, and we have a coffee and we, you know, he, he track, cracks a few jokes at me, so which, which is nice. The Wapukek First Nation, it has their own local government, um, which is pretty awesome. And I'm wondering if you would be able to tell us a little bit more from your perspective, what that means for the people of Canada and First Nations people in general. Wapukek First Nation was, you know, first recognized in the 80s and early 80s. And, and Mizelle Joe played a huge part uh, in bringing that forward and being recognized as a, as a sort of First Nation underneath Canada. Uh, on the island of Newfoundland. Um, as you know, like Newfoundland didn't join Canada until 1949. So, you know, things kind of move slowly in, in that respect in terms of getting recognition. Um, but what it means is that, you know, for, for the First Nation and because they are independent, uh, they're able to um, erect their own high school. And so, you know, when you walk into the high school uh, in Mabokek First Nation, it strikes you right away as like, oh, this is a very different type of learning environment. Yes, it's still following the curriculum of like provincial standards and all this sort of stuff. But you know, just the artwork on the walls, the the languages that are that are that are spoken in the hallways, Mi'kmaq is being incorporated inside of every classroom. So, you know, it's um it's one of those things you go, oh, okay, so this is and this was again like a vision of of Mizel Joe back in the day when they first got their recognition. He was like, okay, first thing we're doing we're taking over schooling. We're going to have a school on the on the reserve. We're going to do all of our high school, all the way from like from daycare all the way up to to the end of high school. They get to stay in the community. They get to school in the community. Get schooled by people from the community, you know, and they get to learn about their culture and, and their traditions as well inside of a school environment. So again, like that's kind of one of the big things that I think uh, uh, Mabokek First Nation really does. You mentioned Mizzle Joe, and I'm curious. Yes. If you can tell us a little bit more about him, what should our viewers know about him? Sagama Mizel Joe, he's he is a, an incredible man. Um, so he has been the chief of Mabokek First Nation for a number of decades. And over the course of that time, you know, like he's he's really established himself as as uh, the main sort of voice for the Mi'kmaq people in, inside of the island of Newfoundland and Labrador, um, but also uh, as a voice for for First Nations in and around the area. Um, and you know he's uh, he's he's such a such a giving individual. Uh, but you know when he, when he says you know if you're not doing something from the heart, then you, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. That's how he lives his life, and it's so inspiring that way. Even just being around him, you just like everything just kind of comes down. And you're just like, okay, no 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 rushing out here. This is just like you know. Um, so he is he is a really really incredible man, and I think uh, we have a couple of other things that we're working on right now. Um, you know, to help him kind of tell his story more, because I think it's one that is really worth telling. So there might be something happening in, in the future that's that might be coming up from there as well. You've worked as a director of photography and series director on a number of other projects before this project specifically for Discover Canada, History Channel, CBC, Food Network. I'm curious um, how your experiences on these sets influenced your time on this project. 
having worked in the industry for 20 years, every, I always say that everything that you do informs the next thing that you do, you know? Um, so, you know, even I think back to some of the lessons that I learned on the first sets that I was ever a part of, I still use those lessons today. Uh, and the thing that's great about, you know, uh, now being able to sort of pull on, on your experiences uh, over like 20 years of filmmaking is that things, Things may seem complicated from the outside, but then when you kind of break it all down and you kind of figure it all out, like like you, I was I was actually saying to uh, saying the other day, it's like you know, at the end of the day, like when you have your crew, you're just trying to take care of them, and depending on where you're shooting and what the location is, that's just it just it's either gonna get easier or harder. <laughs> you know, if you're like if you're in a city and you have lots of amenities and resources, it's pretty easy to take care of a crew. But if you're in the middle of nowhere. You know, and you've got to make sure that your crew has somewhere to sleep and something to eat at the end of the day, then that gets a little harder. Um, so, you know, uh, I think like being able to draw on on the number of experiences that I've had and, and the sets that I've been on helps to inform and helps to really make uh, make creating these films a lot easier, which means I can focus more on the story. You know, if I was if I was worried about where the crew was going to eat tonight, I'm not maybe going to ask the five questions on set that day that I need to. You know what I mean? So it's it's nice to be able to kind of turn that part of their brain off and then focus on, on what you're supposed to be doing at the time, cover as you go through. What's next for you? What can we expect? Right now, uh, I'm just finishing up a new series for Discovery Canada. Um, we I, I put together a show about the hardworking men and women in the marine industry inside of the Avalon Peninsula in Newfoundland. Uh, so that's a 10 part documentary series that's airing right now on Discovery Canada. Uh, on Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11:30 in Newfoundland, Labrador. So, um, and it's it's a great show. So we're we're just finishing that up now. We're kind of in the last couple of weeks of that series, um, which is great. And that was like we we filmed that all through last year, and it was a lot of fun. And you know, it's more of a hard hat heroes kind of show. Uh, and right now, I'm in development on a couple of other pieces, um, some dramatic works as well. So uh, working with an incredible uh, writer, a uh, big mall writer named Jeremy Loveman out of Newfoundland. And we're putting together uh, some dramatic pieces, uh, some dramatic features and, and series and whatnot. So um, yeah, and that's what, that's what we're into now. You know, it's just kind of finishing up the Discovery Show and, and looking at the next project. Wendell, what have you learned about yourself through the making of your film? We kind of have a tendency to get caught up and, and, and we, want, we want things to happen to more like, it need, this needed to happen yesterday. This needed to happen. Go, 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 go. I think the thing that uh, I learned on this film in particular was that, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to slow down and you have to take the time and you have to have the conversations and you have to adjust. And you have to move. You kind of, you can't, you can't just like push your way through things sometimes. It is a gift to be able to make any of these projects. It's a gift to finish a project, first of all. But, you know, it's, it's a gift just to be able to actually shoot some of these projects. So just, you know, if you're on set and you're doing these projects, just remember it's 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 a good thing that you're doing it's a good thing that you're here and just you know slow down and enjoy it every now and then